everybody, this is Adam Kokesh here in Phoenix, Arizona with the Arizona Freedom Team and fellow Arizona Freedom Team member Zani Doko who is running to represent Arizona's first congressional district in the U.S. Congress. Zani, really excited to have you here and, and to be talking about this and, and, and with how you've stepped up in this. Zani has been, and actually I first met him as the webmaster for the Arizona Libertarian Party when he made me the de facto Chair of Yampai yeah. Libertarian County uh, before oh, Libertarian God before God. it existed. So hey, we'll put we'll put Adam's name on the website. So thank yeah. you, thank you, Zani, for for welcoming me to Arizona to the Libertarian Party organizing here. And with we're that. always happy to have people building up the organization. We've gotten a little bit more organized in Yampai since then, but not too much. There's a lot of state crazy yeah, there, here. there's a lot of rules that you have to jump through hoops to become an organized affiliate. So, no, no, I, I, oh man, we could get into that. For we, I mean, Zai's been around with the Arizona LP since about two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Almost as long as I've been an activist at all, he's been involved with the Arizona LP and been a uh, legislative committee or platform committee, I was on judicial committee, committee, and, and uh, bylaws. Bylaws, excuse me. So one, one, one of the things though, that, that we have experienced in Arizona is a particularly egregious effort, as, as is true in most states, by the old parties to keep libertarians off the ballot. So yes. Zani, tell us a story. How did you come to be involved with this Arizona Freedom Team effort as the District well, 1 rep? Well, um, we found out that there was a, a concerted effort to uh, recruit writing candidates. And uh, basically the rules are you can get on the ballot for the general election if you get as much votes, uh, write-in votes in the primary as you would have needed to collect signatures. And for some people that might be a less uh, costly option to get their votes to qualify for the ballot. So we're, we're uh, trying that out. We've got Adam running for U.S. Senate, Barry Hess running for governor, uh, Michael Kielski running for attorney general, Kim Ruff for mine inspector, Jen Gray for secretary of state, Robert Pepton for LD27, and myself running for Congressional District 9. And I'm sorry if I left anyone out. Uh, feel free to ask. Do we forget anybody? anybody? Congressional District 1. He said Congressional that. 1. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So we're glad we have like, this live technical editing going on. Because there's a lot of like, it's a, it's a, when you, you get into politics, it's a lot of bullshit. It's a lot of technical it bullshit. And it's a lot of like Republicans and Democrats to fill out. screwing with libertarians. And you know, it, we have to, if you want to be a political activist, a libertarian, you got to have a lot of patience for all this crap. But uh, just to, to back up a step for people who don't know, this is because in Arizona, the Republicans had a lawsuit and they sued to get libertarians off the ballot. So we were going to have we we had a great slate of candidates. We did, and they were all disqualified. And so yeah. Barry put together this awesome effort. And so I'm glad that Zani's got this particular role in it. But I mean, politics in general. And I, I don't don't worry, I won't write this too long because I want to make this about Zani and his race. But it's a really dumb popularity contest, is it not? I mean, when it that's, comes down to that's it, that's all politics is. And I'm glad I have a day job, and you know, I don't <laughs> I don't have to worry about how popular I am. I'll still. <laughs> Going to work the next day and get paid, Ernie, even Ernie, if I lose elections. Ernie told me Ernie Hancock, who's been involved in the Arizona LP in politics here yeah. for a long time, told me this great story about when he was running for Secretary of State. How uh, at one point he was working with someone in the elections office about getting signatures and forms turned in, and she said, "You know what? I'm just I." I'm having all this trouble like, working. You guys always have conflicts. I hate working with libertarians. You all have jobs. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, it's mic drop. Hello, that's yeah, yeah like that for a libertarian. <laughs> you know, you don't have make a living or make money being involved in politics. You have day jobs. So, background on you. So, people in Arizona who, who may be voting for you or riding you in, or especially people who are watching this, who are considering joining this effort by signing up, going to ArizonaFreedomTeam.com. Give us your data there, your basic contact information if you're interested in helping out. We need phone bankers to reach out to registered libertarians in the state of Arizona to write Zani in so that he can be on the ballot, so that we have libertarians on the ballot in 18 in Arizona. But what should Arizonans know about you? Uh, well, I, uh, I've been living in Arizona for 23 years now. I was originally an immigrant out of Albania. Um, but right now... Those I'm, damn Albanians taking our jobs. 
gosh. Uh, Sorry. Yes, I, I, I came to the United States as an immigrant, and I proudly took American jobs. <laughs> and now? And now I'm working full-time as an electrician. And, and what kind of work do you do as an electrician? Uh, I install light fixtures, power receptacles, and commercial office buildings, and install panels, and wire everything up. I'm, I'm the reason why the lights come on in a place like this. <laughs> so, uh, how did you become a libertarian? I read some books when I was in high school, junior high, and one of my favorites was 1984 by George Orwell, and I never want to live in a world like that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good answer. I, I thought you were going to say something that connected it to your experience in Albania. How old did you say you were? When you I was only US? about five years old when I first came to the U.S. So did, did that influence you at all, your formation of your worldview? Well, in a way, yes. I, I understood that, you know, in the former Eastern Bloc communist countries, they weren't allowed to, you know, cross into Western Europe, but they were economically depressed and had poor quality cars and poor quality media, TV, and everything, and, you know, people were essentially slaves in uh, the former communist countries. They worked for the government and they weren't allowed to chase their dreams they they it was all collectivism all, all that mattered was what can you do for the state what can you do for you know the collective body of people there and i want people to uh, uh aspire to their own individuality to express themselves freely to chase their dreams to you know be different don't be afraid to be different in this world so you're an immigrant yes uh are, are you a U.S. citizen now? I've been a U.S. citizen since 2000. So, how does this experience, uh, and, and so wait, if it was 2000, that was 18 years ago, I'm trying to do the math, what age were you at that point? I was about 10 years old. So you were 10 years old, what was the process for you to become a U.S. citizen? Uh, for me, it wasn't much. My parents did most they of the work. They filled out the forms, right? But, but yeah, so I, 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 picture. I smiled for the picture, and I, I went to the Veterans Memorial Coliseum at some ceremony, and you know, <laughs> did a hand on the heart thing. How now? How at the time? And this is this is really important because you know immigration is, is a you know, pretty hot topic right now. When when you were a, a ten year old Albanian immigrant here and and going through this process to become a U.S. citizen, how did ICE make sure that you weren't? Uh, Wearing a suicide bombing vest at that time. I don't recall ever getting any. <laughs> do you get a pat, pat down? down? No. <laughs> How do they know you weren't a terrorist? Uh, they they like. Is there a screen for that? Do they like? How do how they make sure that you weren't going to be a welfare leech? Did they? I no, no, there was. Yeah, the, I was just a five-year-old kid. How could they even know at that time if I was going to turn out good or bad? Well, how, they they didn't know I was going to turn out to be a libertarian. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, I mean, by that measurement so far, it's worked out pretty well for America, right? Yeah. I think I think we made I think we, even though I had nothing to do with it, we made the right call by letting him in here. So, how has this affected your views on immigration, particularly in terms of how it affects Arizona and what you would be able to do as a member of the U.S. Congress well, on that issue? Well, I understand that immigrants bring great wealth to this country. Immigrants are more likely to start a business than the average American-born citizen. They're more likely to stay out of prison than the average American-born citizen. They're more likely to have big aspirations. Like, all I know is the leaders of all the huge tech companies are immigrants. I mean, we aspire, we came here because we aspire to better ourselves, to live amazing lives, and to chase our dreams. And I think anyone who uh, sees that as their goal to come here should be welcome. Well, see, I don't know. I don't, you made me think, like, I really want to go back to the they took our jobs, jobs argument. Because I look at someone like Elon Musk, and I was like, you know what? I was about to do that. Yeah. And then this immigrant from South Africa comes in and just starts making electric cars and rocket ships. And I was like, God, took our jobs. Yeah. I, was, was I, I came here. I took American jobs. I'll admit <laughs> that. I took uh, some construction jobs, some manual labor. <laughs> Uh, so, some AC tech jobs, and now I'm an electrician. I took American jobs. Because you made yourself a part. Be because of this I country. made myself valuable and I worked hard and learned skills and, you know, applied myself. So I know, I know as a libertarian, uh, and, and I know that there, even within the libertarian movement, there's some debate on the exact practical policy, but generally speaking, as, as people who believe in freedom, we, we hold 
the ideal yeah. of freedom of movement, right? Yes. That, that the only legitimate borders are private property borders. That, that yes. Other than that, people should be able to move free. Now, this is where, hey, now we got to get political. we got to get pragmatic and all that crap. Recognizing that principle, what can you do as a member of Congress? Well, what shifts in policy would you like to see that get us closer to the ideal of freedom? I want us to uh, get rid of E-Verify and this whole idea that you have to prove your citizenship to get a job. I think everyone should have a right to work. I, th I think working is a victimless crime if you're an illegal immigrant. Working contributes to the economy. It uh, builds wealth. You trade uh, your services in exchange for a wage. Both parties are better off. Um, so the idea that we have that it's illegal to work if you're an illegal immigrant, well, that, that's a black market right there. And anyone who wants to take a job is you know, prevented from doing so. And it, they're prevented from assimilating into our society. They're prevented from you know, making their own lives better. Uh, they're a second-class citizen at that point if they're not allowed to work. Um, so I want to get rid of this idea that you have to prove your citizenship to get a job. So get rid of E-Verify and... Uh, uh, yeah, I suppose if you, if you were only allowed like one tweak to the immigration system yeah. as a whole, like that's that's up there. It's a good call. Yeah, and you know, I I want to get rid of quotas. Like, there's restrictions based on country of origin, religious tests that that they're talking about right now. I don't want any kind of restriction based on where you was bo were born. Um, I don't think where you were born has any kind of relevance to the quality of your character. That's just another form of prejudice. Well said. So I'm Doko, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have any websites or anything else you want to promote? Well, I've got a Facebook page, but really, I want to promote other libertarians. I want to promote Adam and his show that he's running for U.S. Senate. Write him in. I want to promote Nicholas Sarwark, who's running for mayor of Phoenix. He's the Libertarian National Committee chairman, and he's running for mayor of Phoenix. I was out today collecting signatures to get Nicholas Sarwark on the ballot. I think that's a huge race, and that's a great libertarian to have in the race. So I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm doing this for the broader liberty movement. Absolutely. So on, on his behalf, then, I'll plug two specific websites, azlp.org. Yes. For those of you who are in the state of Arizona want to get involved with the state party, azlp.org. And the second one, this is the one that's really the priority right now for this effort here in Arizona, ArizonaFreedomTeam.com. Thank you very much.